Welcome to r slash pro revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with pro revenge after being wronged. Thank you guys for subscribing, likes, and supporting in the comments. And today's first story is The Neighborhood Remembers, The Neighborhood Punishes. This is a story I've been sitting on for a few years now, and having discovered r slash pro revenge a couple months ago, I decided it's finally time to let the world know what happened to a sociopath who dared to cross the neighborhood. To set the stage, I used to live in a big but not huge city. Let's call it Palmville. I live near the corner of a dense suburb, nestled between overstuffed apartment buildings, a river that smelled like diesel when at low tide, and two busy highways. I was a minority in this neighborhood, and I caught a lot of heat for it. People didn't really like white people there, but enough of our neighbors were accepting of us that aside from a few disagreements between families and the beatings that came with them, I didn't feel like I was in danger when leaving my home. It was a rough neighborhood, but it was my home, and it protected its own. The community center was like a temple, and let's call her A.M. was the priestess. In our neighborhood, she was respected like a living deity, and her calm and understanding reflected her status. I never once saw her behave without a strong moral code. And the final piece to set this stage, our former landlord. Short Asian lady in all the stereotypical ways, kind and sweet. Our house was above my parents' pay grade, and she knew it. She went out of her way to find house repair and maintenance jobs for tenants that were having money problems. She'd pay them by taking chunks out of their rent, oftentimes a bit larger than how much the work they did was worth. Looking back, that was probably illegal, but that's irrelevant because she died. The circumstances surrounding her death were suspect, but none of the suspects play a part in this story, so there's no need to go into detail on it. Her sons, who wanted nothing to do with real estate, took over the business. They couldn't make heads or tails of how she managed to float books with so much red in them and began dumping properties. Ours was on that list. I harbor no ill will towards them and still wish them the best, but the guy who bought the house entered the sociopath and today's victim. This guy wasted no time in making our lives heck. His first action was to raise the rent. Apparently when the account changed hands, he was allowed to update the rent to modern pricing. We'd been there for several years and were paying below market even from the onset, so this was a huge blow by itself. The second blow came when he said that the rent had to be ready in full on the first of every month. No partial payments, no work to reduce it, no extensions. Full rent on the first of the month, or an eviction notice on the second. This was hemorrhaging our savings, but we were surviving for the moment. Meanwhile, AM had lobbied hard for the city to co-found a revival project to renovate the entire aging suburb and she succeeded. One street at a time had conga lines of whole trucks almost every day, and people were getting old leaky pipes replaced, sinkholes in yards patched, Fences repaired, paint renewed, it was an amazing thing, and an enticing thing for the sociopath. Being at the corner of the neighborhood, our house was on the last street on the list, and sociopath wanted us out, so he could relist the house after renovation. He never said this directly, but multiple conversations made his intent clear, even for 10-year-old me. Random inspections, overhyping of minor problems with the house, even so far as trying to bring us up on completely false animal abuse charges because our cat was attacked by what we believe was a raccoon and he tried to claim we did it. Yeah, because a vet can't figure out the difference between knife wounds and a mauling. We read the writing on the wall and began preparations to move. We decided to move in with my oldest brother in a place I'll call Banjo Land. Most of us had moved except my other brother who stayed behind because he still had a lot of social ties in Palmville and his new job meant if he cut corners, he could keep paying sociopaths inflated bills. Well, despite his best efforts, he came up $20 short one month and Sociopath jumped on it. He had 30 days. We made the 400-mile trip from Banjo Land to Palmville to get the rest of our stuff. And I can't say as I approved of my brother's living conditions, but I guess that's beside the point. The month passed rather uneventfully. I guess Sociopath figured he'd won, so there was no need to burn the gas to drive out and gloat. The neighborhood had learned what was going on, and that was the first time I'd ever been back in that neighborhood, where I didn't get a single call out, a single glare, a single racist remark. Everybody behaved reverently. It was kind of disturbing in all honesty. I guess people in lower incomes all know what eviction means and felt like I was having a bad enough time already. Well, 20 days later, he says it's time to leave. We still had a week left, but it didn't matter. We didn't have the money to try fighting it with a lawyer. AM descended from the heavens and bought us a couple extra days, but it was evident he really, really wanted us out, possibly because the work trucks were now one street away. The last time I ever saw the house I grew up in, workmen were throwing my childhood possessions into a large bin, when we supposedly still had three days left to leave. Everything that follows is a collection of information I got through the grapevine and phone calls with people present at the events. Immediately, Sociopath moved into the house himself. Why, you may ask? People who owned the homes they were living in were getting the full cost of renovations comped by the city. 
He figured that by moving in himself, he'd be able to get this house he bought at liquidation price renovated for free and flip it. AM was having none of it. She explained to him that at the time, the revival project was approved, that house was a rental lot, and they can't change the budget now. She then explained to him that the partial cost coverage that had been approved for the lot was in our name, not his, and he wasn't eligible for partial cost comping either. He'd have to pay every penny himself, and since the entire neighborhood was getting a facelift, he was required to at least renovate the exterior, otherwise she'd see the house condemned as an eyesore, or dilapidated or whatever the legal term is. He went really cheap on the renovations, basically put in new carpets and a coat of paint. This would later come to bite him in the A. He then began trying to sell the house in earnest. The neighborhood remembered what he'd done. There were vandalisms when nobody was there, and loud noises from the neighbors when people were there, to look the house over. And any time a prospective buyer asked around, they got the full stink eye from anybody they talked to. They made sure he simply couldn't get that house sold at market value. After three months of this, he lowered the listing price. Then a month later, he lowered it again and finally got a bite. AM personally made sure he had to file every single piece of paperwork before it changed hands. Every single part of the house had to be inspected thoroughly. And that's when Karma herself caught up with him. In his hasty and cheap renovations, he'd somehow damaged the pipes. Black mold. AM remembered how he treated us and she decided to pay him back in kind. I never heard how exactly she pulled it off, but she managed to delay him getting the news about the black mold being discovered for several days. Long enough that by the time he did get the news, he didn't have enough time left to try getting it cleaned or make a last ditch effort to save the house. The house was condemned days later. In their final act, AM and members of the neighborhood filed every single complaint and injunction they could and arranged for him to be compelled by the city to demolish the house immediately, a cost he had to pay out of his own pocket. He tried to destroy a family and broke laws just to make some quick cash, and instead was left fighting a year-long legal battle and ended up losing thousands. The neighborhood remembers, the neighborhood punishes. The second story is, don't SH on your own doorstep. So this one's been happening over the past few months, and it's hilarious. So I live on a little street with about seven houses. We're the only student house in the area, and so we're often a target for people looking to make quick money by blaming us because they think it's easy to get us into trouble. This lady thought wrong. Cast, DB, our neighbor, aka Dumb B. TB, my housemate, a genuine teddy bear. CW, council worker. Me, many earthworms. So I'm walking back from university when I'm accosted by a middle-aged woman in her dressing gown and slippers. Hey you, I stop because I'm trying to be polite to the neighbors. The locals have a location hate students group who vandalize student property to try and make us leave, so I tend to overcompensate to make our household look good. Hi, how are you? You vandalized my car. Are you seeing the irony here? I cross the road to where DB is stood and where a car is parked and ask, pardon? You dumb B, did you not hear me? I said you vandalized my car. She was really trying to sell that I vandalized her car when I was on the other side of the road and she knew that. I'm sorry, I think you've got the wrong person. DB points at a huge scrape down the side of her car and I wince. That poor thing must have been beaten up pretty badly, but I had nothing on me that could have inflicted that much damage. I explain that the bin men destroyed my moped, still in for repairs, so they might have caught her car too, and her eyes light up. A moped? I nod. So you're the little C who parks on my drive? Our house has a driveway big enough for four cars, and is obviously right outside my house. So I tell her no, that I haven't been parking on her drive, especially because my bike was destroyed and has been gone for over two weeks. You're a liar, she's like spitting in my face at this point. I have photos of your bike blocking my drive from three days ago. That's why I was parked on the road, and that's why my car got totaled. Okay, I nod. May I see the photos? DB is all too happy to whip out her phone and show me the photos of what she proudly believes to be my moped. A fire engine red piece of scrap that, to be honest, was well beyond saving even before the bin men mangled her. Except it isn't my bike. Ma'am, I hate to be rude, but that's a mobility scooter. Cue the screaming and shouting about how rude teenagers are. I'm 21, and how we university students always disrespect the locals. She tells me that I must think she's an idiot. I do, for thinking that she's wrong about my bike. She was. So I take a deep breath and say, Ma'am, I'm in a rush, but you really are wrong about the bike. Maybe ask her next door neighbor, a kind old lady who owns that mobility scooter, but is a little forgetful, about why she parks her scooter on your drive. I walk away and think nothing of it, except now she's totaled her car on our private property instead of her own drive after running our fence that blocks the drive down and complaining to our landlady about antisocial behavior. There isn't any, by the way. We're four reclusive students who stay in all night watching Netflix with our headphones in, and she's also like five houses down from us, so she definitely wouldn't be able to hear the noise she was describing. Pretty much the whole neighborhood is shunning us at this point, as DB had been spreading lies about our behavior, telling everyone that we vandalized her property, so it's only fair that she uses our driveway as compensation. 
I feel responsible for her behavior, as I should have shut her down immediately, rather than letting this drag out. So, I sit in my room, nothing new there, and hatch a plan. The next morning I walk past her house and watch as DB lets her dog out, watches it take a crap on public pavement and then shrug and walk away. Bingo! According to our local council, this is an offense she can get fined for as it's vandalism and obstruction of council property. So every morning as I walk to get to my train, I take a photo of the turds, some fresh, some crusty, and some smeared across the pavement by some poor sod who stood in it. Then I email everything to my local counselor, who is fuming that someone fully able-bodied is allowing their dog to do this without cleaning it up. She gets fined a thousand pounds with a threat of more, if she continues to do so. I heard this from my neighbor, as he was friends with CW, who handled the case. And guess what? She did. And the more that dog pooped, the more I reported it. She racked up four thousand pounds of fines just for dog SH alone, and I didn't even report her trespassing on private property. But apparently she'd spoken to CW, who was a newbie, and pressured him until he let slip that a neighbor had reported it, and of course she happened to one, realize it was me, and two, know where I effing live. She hammered on my door, screaming about how she was going to drown my cat. I don't have one, my neighbor's cat just loves me. Smash my window and then catch me when I was walking home. Now TB is also a recluse. I've said in previous posts that he basically stays in his room and only leaves to go to uni or grab a beer and some food. But he is peeved at the way this lady is screaming at me. He stomps downstairs, yanks the door open while she's mid-scream and glares down at her. He's six foot seven, tall, and a rugby player, so he's basically a walking muscle. If I didn't know that he liked to cry at anime while hugging us on the sofa, I'd think that he was terrifying. But this lady wasn't privy to that information. She looks up at this angry, massive northerner and just trembles as he says in a very low, threatening voice, You need to get off our property and take your car. If you so much as blink at writerly snitch and I hear about it, I'll not only call the counselor for the dog SH you flung on her driveway, but I'll call the police for damage to property and harassment. Now F off, lady. Safe to say she ran faster than I've ever seen her run. Last week I heard from the neighbor that CW had sold her car for scraps. She never got the thing fixed, just to pay off the eventual 4,200 pounds of fine she's racked up. And every time I walk to the train station and see the mobility scooter parked on her drive, it feels like another little win. Thank you for watching. See you next time.